Hey guys, Chris Dick here. Uh, we're going to continue on with our Hadoop in installation on a VMware workstation here. Um, the first step that we have to do is install our uh, Java, and then we'll uh, install SSH, and then we'll install Hadoop. Um, this will be broken up into three sections. Uh, the, the shortest of the two are going to be the Java and the SSH. So let's get started with uh, the Java installation. The first thing that we should do is just to do an app get update. And um, what this will do is just update the list um, of software that's available. Uh, telling It basically tells Ubuntu where to find things. Um, <clears throat> we are going to be downloading uh, the Java default JDK. And this will uh, this will uh, just sort of keep us with a very simple uh, Java developers kit. Uh, there are several others. There's you know there's uh, there's Oracle and Sun. Um, each of them will work. Uh, I like this one because it uh, works just fine with Hadoop, uh, and it's uh, it's easy to know where everything is. So let's get started. So we're gonna install this one here. Now it takes just a little bit of time. So I may just pause while uh, we wait for this to uh, to happen. Okay, we're back. Um, so we've Java, installed Java. Everything uh, looks like it's uh, done properly. Now the other thing that we're also going to do is we have to put in these uh, these uh, Java variables, is what I call them. Um, we're going to add them into a file called the uh, bash dot bash rc. Now this is a global bash arts RC. It allows, uh, it means that if I install this uh, ver set of variables into that file, uh, it means that every user of this computer will have access to those variables. So it can be very valuable for a variety of reasons, namely that uh, if I have other, uh, other Hadoop uh, users installed on this computer, they don't have to install uh, the vi variables themselves. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's do this right now. Okay. Now I've got this uh, this little set of code all set up here. Uh, you know, if you want to, you know, feel free to take that code and use it in your own if you if you choose. What it does here, the first thing that it does is it's going to set <coughs> the uh, ownership uh, of the Bash RC file to Ubuntu. That's the current user. That's me. Um, and then it uh, sends out these <coughs> these uh, these entries one by one into the bash rc file as well and then it returns the ownership of that file to root right uh, i don't usually like messing around with permissions uh, it gets a little ugly if something goes wrong but uh, in this case it's much easier to just set the set the ownership and set it back it's uh, there's no change of permissions so let's go ahead and do this okay we paste it in and you see it, it executes it right away now what we do want to do is we want to look at that file and make sure that it actually uh, that our, our changes took place. <clears throat> and we'll just cat that out to the screen. And there you can see it right down here. We'll just make sure everything says the right thing. And so far so good. Now you'll notice as well that my Java home is pointing to uh, user uh, live JVM uh, default dash Java. Now, default dash Java is actually a shortcut. I'll show you uh, in the file manager here. We would It's good to know this because um, the reason you kind of want to do something like this is, is that applications like Java update fairly regularly. So if um, you know if, if I'm relying on Java home to be to be accurate all the time, um, and, and I have it installed, which I will have it installed on several, like that variable will be used in several um, uh, initialization files. Um, if I update my Java, well, that would mean if I've got 100 applications using that, that, uh, that variable in 100 different installation files, <coughs> that means that I would have to go through 100 different installation files and update where Java actually is. But if I point it to this link, 
um, then I can th then I can just change the link at any time, and I never have to touch any of the initialization. So that's actually a very smart way to do things. And this link, just so you're familiar, uh, it actually points to this folder right here, which is right there. Okay. All right. Looking good. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to shut down my virtual machine. Uh, you can choose to do a reboot. It's just if you just do something like this, sudo uh, reboot, that will work just fine. But what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take a snapshot. So I'm going to shut it down because it is um, uh, quicker to do it when it's shut down. Otherwise, uh, VMware will will sort of uh, be running in the background taking snapshots. So let's go ahead and do this right now. So we go to snapshot take snapshot and I'm going to say Java installed. Okay, so that's done. It's very quick and as you can see that the snapshot is uh, listed right here. So if you're doing it in the background, it takes a lot longer, a few minutes to do. So let's power up that virtual machine again. Okay, we're back up here. We'll log into Ubuntu. And what we're going to do is just test our variables, make sure that they, uh, they actually took place. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, pull in this. We'll open up our terminal session. And we're going to just echo the variable that we set, so that being Java Home. Okay, so we look for the echo Java Home. Looks like we're spelt right. Good. We'll also quickly do a Java version check just to show you what the actual version is because, you know, again, sometimes you can have several versions of Java installed and not really know. So we have 1.8.0 uh, version 11.11 or 11.111, let's call it. Um, so that's my end. That's the end of this uh, Java installation video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share and uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, we'll catch you uh, in the next video for uh, installing uh, passwordless SSH. Thanks a lot, guys.